Hello and welcome to my next performance tutorial. This time I'll show you how to simulate compression of a conical spring. So before you import the geometry, you may want to go to Tools, Settings, and here go to Graphics and reduce the cut deflection value, because otherwise there might be some graphical artifacts with this kind of geometry. And also in some cases you may want to disable this option to split periodic phases, but in this case we will keep it. So now let's import, the, let's create a new model and let's import the geometry. And then um, while it loads, it may take a while, I will show you how I prepared it in, in FreeCAD. So here you can see the, the geometry in FreeCAD it was uh, made, uh, that the spring itself was made using the additive helix feature. Easily, um, you can easily specify the, the parameters of the helix and then without having to use the, the actual sweep technique, you can easily create a whole spring, including a conical spring. So this is how it works in FreeCAD. And now if we go back to Prepomex, we can define the meshing parameters for the two plates. And for them, I will specify uh, max element size of 10 millimeters, uh, minimum element size of 0 0.1, uh, one element per edge, one element per curvature, and also disable the second order. And then for the spring, I will specify also 10 millimeters, maximum element size, and then uh, 0 0.1 uh, minimum element size, uh, three elements here, and keep the second order. And then I just need to create uh, sweep mesh. And uh, this is pretty new uh, algorithm. It's based on GMesh, but developed specifically for Prepomex. It allows you to mesh um, geometries like this um, you, that you couldn't mesh using the, the extrude technique, and also enables you to use the quasi structure quad uh, 2D meshing algorithm for nice uh, structured meshes. So let's mesh the uh, plates here first. And uh, for them, uh, I will specify uh, quasi structured 2D meshing algorithm. Recomb recombination will be set to simple, and I will accept this. And I will do the same with the other plate. So I'll also specify quasi structure quad and simple recombination, and then leave the, the rest with the default settings. Mm, and then I also create another uh, sweep mesh item for, for the spring. And here uh, I will also specify quasi structure quad and simple recombination. And now I'm, I'm ready to, to mesh the whole assembly. So I select all the parts and click to create the and the whole mesh. Again, it may take a, a bit uh, because mm, the mesh will be quite dense, as you will see, uh, to, of course, to, to, to get uh, proper results, uh, but uh, soon we should be able to, to see the uh, meshed uh, geometry. So, as you can see, the, the parts are already appearing in the FE model tab in the tree, and this means that uh, they are meshed one by one, and uh, we should get the third part soon. Uh, so, let's just wait a bit and we should see the whole uh, assembly meshed. Okay, I think it's ready. As you can see, we have the uh, quad mesh. It's pretty good. Uh, you may see some distortion here, actually. Uh, basically, this is uh, how it works in this conical spring case. It will, shouldn't happen for cylindrical spring. Uh, but uh, if you want to check the element quality, there is an option here. You can go to model and then element, then element quality. And here you can use various criteria. You can check the different parts and uh, this will show you um, the locations, uh, this, this will highlight the, the elements that uh, uh, basically based on some criteria that may need some improvement. So um, this way you can check your, your mesh using the uh, different uh, checks that are available here uh, based on Gmesh. Uh, so and that's how you could do it, but for now let's uh, hide this mesh and uh, I will uh, define the material uh, section and uh, so on. So for the material, I will use the uh, usual definition of steel. So I will specify 210 uh, gigapascals and uh, 0 0.3 uh, for the Poisson's ratio. And then I will create a section, it will be solid section, and I will assign it to all the three parts and it will be uh, defined like this. So um, now uh, I just need to define a new analysis. Of course, uh, it will be a new step, it will be static step, I will leave the default settings here and nothing changes. And maybe bef before I proceed to boundary conditions and loads, uh, I will also define one more thing because uh, I should connect those parts somehow. For now they are disconnected, they are not uh, merged in, in any way, the meshes are disconnected, so I need to use tie constraints to uh, connect them. So I go to constraints, I will create a new tie constraint, and then uh, let me select the face. Unfortunately I don't have um, some partition in here that could help, uh, it will be tricky to do, but it will help define the, the surfaces for tie constraints. 
but still let's, um, let's define it uh, manually. So um, I will use uh, the plate as, as master, so I'll let me select the, the bottom plate. And then for the slave, I will select the um, bottom face of the spring here. And I will also specify um, non-default tolerance, because I want this constraint to act at a larger distance than normally. I want to, to keep it uh, still here. And then I will disable adjustment to make sure it doesn't uh, distort the, the mesh. Uh, so this is the first type constraint, and then I will create another, uh, which will be, uh, of course, for the top part, for the top region. So then again, uh, I will select the plate as the master, and then uh, slave as um, spring as the slave. So this will be the, the slave surface, and um, then I again specify this uh, value for the tolerance and disable adjustment, and this is ready to go. Uh, so tie constraints are already defined and now I can proceed to analysis definition. So um, this will be uh, first of all uh, fixing the bottom plate here. So this is the, the fixed boundary condition. And then uh, I will also um, fix some degrees of freedom for the top um, plate. Basically I want to fix X and Y displacement. Uh, so I will only leave uh, the displacement in the third direction in Z. Uh, free and in this direction I will specify force so I will use surface traction select this face here and uh, specify minus 100 newtons uh, force acting on, on this uh, face here so now uh, the, basically the, the whole analysis is defined and I can start it and wait for the results and then evaluate them the results are available now so let's open them and now we have the deflection of the spring visible, uh, so uh, we can um, explore the, the results. Uh, maybe first of all let me hide those two plates, they won't be necessary for now. Uh, I can leave the automatic um, def deformation factor or I can set the true scale to see the actual deformation, but maybe Maybe let's keep it at true scale for now. Um, and the, the first thing I want to check is the deflection of the spring. So I will select um, this uh, third component of displacement. Uh, and then, uh, of course, I will go to um, CalPAT sheet. And here I can uh, compare and with the analytical results. So here you can have you, you see the um, equation for, for the deflection of this conical spring. This is the result that we are expecting to, um, to find in prepomics. And if we compare it with the values, you can see that we are really close here. So um, this is basically uh, correct. Uh, but then uh, I also want to check uh, the stresses. Uh, so for that, uh, I can go and check the von Mises stress. And then I can also check the individual components. But maybe let's start with um, von Mises stress. I will enable the query tool and uh, let me uh, just show you the, the value that we're looking for. So um, the full Mrs. stress is supposed to be around 2 megapascals. And if we go to, um, to our results, you can see that we're pretty close uh, to this value. Uh, we are really, really uh, close to uh, what we are looking for here. So um, this is the, the result that we obtained. Uh, when it comes to von Mises stress, but uh, then we can also check um, the shear stresses, and they should be around 1.2 megapascal. So then we can go to uh, shear stress components and uh, see how they uh, changed around how they change uh, around the uh, spring. If we check them one by one, you can see uh, their values. We can, of course, ignoring the, the concentrations caused by time constraints, so we can go to the locations uh, that are expected to have the uh, highest values, and then we can uh, evaluate them uh, one by one. So you can see uh, where the stresses are the highest. So again, we can also do it, of course, for other components, but uh, we are mainly interested in uh, in the total full misses stress. So uh, this is how we can check the, the results of our analysis. So we confirm that the deflection is correct, the full misses stresses are correct, and uh, the shear stress is also uh, close to, to what we um, calculated analytically. So basically, uh, the results should be correct. By the way, if you wonder what n means, this is the number of active coils. And the other parameters, I think, should be pretty clear. And they are from literature, but um, they should be pretty clear what they mean, even though they are from Polish books. But uh, basically, uh, that their meaning should be, I think, um, rather uh, clear. All right, uh, that's it for this performance tutorial. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. As always, feel free to ask any questions and suggest topics for future tutorials in the comments. Have a nice day and see you in the next video.